Hi, I'm Rachel from Gentle Frog. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more content. If you're having issues with your bookkeeping, please follow the link at the end of the video to schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment with me. Thank you. else can I help you with today? Yeah, so how do I find, um, how do I determine which account is linked to which product? Okay, so for your income, what you do is you go up here to this um, cogwheel looking thing. Mm -hmm. And then you go to products and services. This is going to bring up all of your income account lists or everything that you sell to other people. Mm -hmm. And then it will, um, however you've put them in is how it, it will pull them up. Does that make sense? Like if you put it like this is an account for income and this is a sub account of this. So in order to change this one, you would have to go to edit. So basically all you do is you figure out which one needs to be updated, which happens. Um, and then click on the edit button. So which one do you think needs to be changed? Um, the fountains one. Okay, so fountains has three different types of fountains, a concrete, a pump, and a rock fountain. So you would need to figure out which one needs to be changed first. I've been having trouble with the pump. Okay, so let's click on the down arrow for edit. And it should open. Okay. There it is, the income account right here. Just keep scrolling until we find it. And they have changed it again. This is the first time that I'm seeing this one look weird like this. So you have, so we've set this up as you buy it, then you sell it, you buy it, that you sell it, and it's attached to inventory. So the income account, here is where you would change the income account. You just click on the little drop down arrow and figure out where you want this to be um, mapped back to. Okay. So if you wanted to add a new one, like if you wanted to break this out and you wanted to know what all of your fountain sales were, period, you would click on add new income account sales of product. And then you would just change this description right here to say fountain sales income or something that you're going to remember what it is for fountain sales. You can even call it just fountain sales if you want. Okay. And then hit save and close. Okay. And anything that you do in here, you can always change, change later. So if you decide that it, it, you want to call it, you want this to be a sub account of something else, you can absolutely do that also. Like you can um, change this to a sub account of something else. Okay. Okay. And then now all we're going to do is save and close. And that changes the item for you. Do the same thing for um, the cost of your expense account if you needed it to go somewhere else. Like if you wanted it to go to um, fountain purchases as a cost of goods sold because you're reselling it, you could change it from a generic to something specific. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was also wondering about tracking the 1099s for vendors. How do I set that up? Perfect. That's so easy. So, um, well, it's easy on our part. Sometimes it's difficult on theirs. So what we're going to do is go to expenses and then go to vendors. And then when you set somebody up as a new one, we're actually going to use this books by Betsy because she can get a ton of man because she's providing a service. Okay. Click up here on edit. And then um, scroll down just a hair because it's down here at the bottom, right here, this button that says track 90, 1099s for payments. Okay. And you can also, um, you would need to get, obviously get the 1090 or the W9 and then have them fill it out. And then you would be able to fill in the social and that's going to um, populate in your 1099 when it's time for 1099s. It's going to automatically grab her and say, I need to issue her a 1099. It may ask you to review your 1099 status. Um, after the fact to make sure that it's coded to the correct, correct cost code for her, like the, rec the correct box, but it will track all of the payments made to her at this point. And then right. you just hit save and you're finished. 
Okay, that was easy. Yeah, chart for as for chart your chart of accounts. This is where people get, get a little bit crazy. That I've seen, they'll make an account for everything known to man. That is not what your chart of accounts is designed for. Your chart of accounts is designed to be an overview of your business transactions. So very generic of what's going on. So basically it would go your chart of accounts. Then you would run the chart, the, the profit, like basically your chart of accounts shows up on your profit and loss. You would then click on a specific category that you wanted to see, for instance, like advertising. In advertising, it's going to list all of the vendors that you code to advertising. Then you can actually run a report by vendor for advertising to see how much you've spent direct specifically for that vendor. Then after that is classes and locations. So you can break down reports, but I've seen people like they start putting all of their account, their vendors in their chart of accounts. That's something that you should steer clear of, but you also need to create your chart of accounts to where it's going to make more sense for you and your business when you start running reports. Mm -hmm. So if you have three different aspects of sales, like for instance, for us as bookkeepers, we can have bookkeeping, tax preparation, and training. If you want to know your cost breakdown, how much your, your income is by all three of those, then those should be categories for you because it makes more sense for you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it does. It's good to know I can um, have that much customization in it. That really helps. Yes. Um, can you walk me through how to run a report? I know that there's more customization available to that than what I've been doing. There is. You can get absolutely crazy within reporting with QuickBooks sometimes. So right over here on the left-hand side is reports. You just click on reports and it's going to open the report aspect of QuickBooks for you. My favorite thing to do. So these come up as favorites already starred in pretty much everybody's QuickBooks account. You can, if you scroll down, it will tell you, it will kind of give you the gist of what we're looking at reporting wise within QuickBooks. So like, if you want to know how your business is doing, these are all of the reports that are associated with that. Some of these are specific to things that you have to do within QuickBooks to make it work. Um, especially like if you were like, let's say this is a construction company, they could use um, projects in here and they could run reports on projects. You can see what your customers are doing. You can see what your vendors are doing. You can see how much liabilities you've paid. So you would just go through this list of accounts and figure out which one that you would need to look at that applies for what you're trying to do. Are you trying to run a report for a vendor? Are you trying to run a report for a customer? Are you trying to run a business report? And then look within the category and find it. Now you can also use this search box right here. Like if you know you're not sure where, where it is and you've looked through it and you can't find it. So like, let's say that you want to run the 1099 report right now. If you start typing in this box 1099 and don't hit enter, it's going to list all of the reports down here that are associated with 1099s. Mm -hmm. So you can do the same thing up here. So if you know that you want to run something for vendor, you can type in the word vendor and it's going to pull up all of the reports that are associated with vendors. Okay. Thank you.